So this is the final um, part of the lecture from October 21st on skeletal muscle function, um, just so that we can understand all of these different um, essential things about how skeletal muscle contracts um, and other cells involved in its kind of maintenance and regeneration before we start talking about what happens with age. Right? And so for the final part of this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the basic differences between different types of muscle fibers, as well as what satellite cells are um, and how they work to repair and regenerate muscle tissue. And so skeletal muscle contraction, which we've spent the past three kind of portions of this lecture talking about, is determined by the type of muscle fiber. And the type of muscle fiber is determined by the myosin that that um, muscle fiber or cell expresses. So there are three different types or isoforms of myosin. There's type 1 myosin, type 2A, and type 2X. And depending on the type of myosin that exists within the muscle fiber or the muscle cell, that determines the muscle fiber's kind of characteristics, right? And so most muscles contain all three types of muscle fibers, right? Type 1, type 2A, and type X. Um, and uh, in terms of the motor units, um, all the muscle fibers within a motor unit or innervated by that same motor neuron fall into the same type, right? So there's a little bit of diversity within the muscles as organs to have all three types of muscle fibers, but within a motor unit, there is no diversity, right? A motor unit, <clears throat> um, that motor neuron innervates only one specific type of muscle fiber, right? And so depending on the type of myosin um, and the type of fiber, there are some differences in sort of how fast the muscle fibers contract, how much force they generate, as well as how resistant they are to fatigue. And you can see that listed in the table here. Um, so in terms of force, we also have a graph up in this corner. The type one fibers generate the least amount of force, right? And type two A and two X generate more with two X generating kind of the most amount of force for each fiber, right? Um, and the contraction speed is also different, right? So type one, is a slow contracting or slow twitch fiber. And the type two fibers are um, can contract faster. And that has something to do with their metabolic profiles, right? And so type one fibers are um, highly oxidative, right? They rely very much on aerobic respiration and they have a ton of mitochondria. And the relying um, on, on kind of oxidative um, respiration means that they might contract a little bit slower, but it also makes them more resistant to fatigue because oxidative or aerobic respiration generates about 34, what, 36 to 38 ATP per one unit of glucose. And so type 1 fibers are good for um, activities that require kind of like a long-term repetitive contraction, like maintaining your posture, kind of slow moving locomotion. Whereas the fast twitch fibers, type two, fibers that uh, contract faster and generate more force, rely much more heavily on glycolytic or glycolysis for ATP generation. And what you might remember from back, back, back when you learned about uh, metabolism is that glycolysis happens quickly, but it only generates about two ATP. When compared with the 36 to 38 ATP generated by aerobic respiration, you can imagine why these muscle fibers might fatigue faster, right? Because they're not generating as much ATP, um, but they can respond quickly because they can um, do glycolysis in a much faster time frame, then they can do aerobic respiration. And so usually the type two fibers, because one, they generate more force and two, they happen kind of more quick, contract more quickly, are used for short bursts of movement, right? So quick movements, as well as movements that require like maximum force would be controlled by type two fibers. And you can imagine that it's good for a muscle to have all three types, right? So every muscle that you have 
can sort of respond in this slow maintenance way, or it can respond in sort of this quick, fast, forceful way, right? And that's why a muscle as an organ might want to have all of these different types of fibers within it so that it can respond differently in different situations. And then uh, the final thing we're gonna talk about in relation to kind of muscle regeneration and repair and then maintaining skeletal muscle um, is satellite cells. And satellite cells are sort of an undifferentiated stem cell that exists in skeletal muscle fibers. And their function is to promote both repair and regeneration of muscle cells. And if we look at them anatomically, if you look at this cross section of a muscle fiber here, the satellite cells actually come into direct contact with the extracellular matrix. And so in order for satellite cells to be activated and actually help to repair muscle damage, factors from the extracellular matrix are secreted and they activate satellite cells after damage. And so a satellite cell as a stem cell exists in a quiescent state in G0. And that's sort of how they are usually found in your muscle cells. But in response to an injury or damage to the muscle tissue, satellite cells can become activated and enter into the cell cycle. And there's a bunch of different ways that satellite cells can be activated, uh, but two major ones that are kind of important for this class are listed here. Um, and one is by growth factor activation. And so the extracellular matrix can secrete growth factors um, like fibroblast growth factor and activate satellite cells um, to enter into the cell cycle from G0 into G1. And the immune response, specifically nitrogen, um, nitric oxide signaling can also activate satellite cells. Right? And so normally a satellite cell is sitting on the muscle fiber in G0. And then upon injury, it can become activated. Right, And one thing that happens when it becomes activated is it actually expresses um, specific extracellular proteins called integrins. Right, And so activated satellite cells will start to express these integrins. And then the integrins can actually bind to components of the extracellular matrix, like laminin, and allow the satellite cells, once they're activated, to bind and sort of roll towards the site of injury or migrate. Right? And you might be wondering like how they actually find the site of injury. Um, and they do that via a process called chemotaxis. And so satellite cells can also sense um, chemotactic factors or things that are given off at the site of injury, which you can imagine are in very high concentration right where the damaged muscle fiber is and sort of decrease in concentration as you move away from it. And so an activated satellite cell will roll towards the injury or towards this higher concentration gradient of chemotactic factors. And that will help it find where the injury in the muscle is. And once it's there, satellite cells will begin to divide and differentiate. And most satellite cells will become what's known as a myoblast, and then ultimately differentiate further into new muscle fibers to replace the damaged tissue. But so satellite cells also need to sort of repopulate um, the muscle cells with themselves. And so some will um, regenerate into new satellite cells that can be used to heal um, a subsequent damage to muscle fibers or a subsequent injury. And the mechanism by which satellite cells divide and decide whether to become a muscle fiber or a satellite cell is not well understood, right? But they are important in both kind of this repair and maintenance as well as um, regeneration of muscle tissue.